Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Uh, I am in clinical practice and I take care of patients with a variety of different metabolic health issues. I also have a strong research background. I've got a PhD. I worked with liver metabolism and um, in fact, platelets and vascular injury in my PhD and my, and my master's. And Way back when I was doing my master's and my PhD, we had a particular model of vascular injury because we were looking at how to help and correct vascular injury in the liver, particularly when the liver was transplanted. <clears throat> and one of the things that is not spoken about very much in our um, ketogenic science space, but something that I want to explore, I want to ask questions, I want to raise questions about this and give you my observations, my anecdotes. And that is the role of volume. <clears throat> Excuse me, the role of volume, you know what, let me increase my volume and take some Kingfisher tea. This is rooibos tea, Kingfisher, and that's what I'm drinking today because uh, it's a weekend and I'm not drinking coffee. Okay, so one of the things I want to explore are vo rapid volume shifts in cells. Now, let's go back to, and, and the harm that that may cause. We, we talk a lot about inflammation. We talk a lot about the inflammatory molecules that get expressed on the surface of cells. Definitely has a role to play in heart disease. But there are other diseases that are tightly associated with changes in cellular volume. Now, where do I get this from? Well, when I was doing my master's and my PhD, the first thing I did during my master's preparation in the laboratory is we created a model where we could take livers, rat livers, pig livers, and we also explore this in human livers. And when we infused a high concentration of glucose, glucose, galactose, fructose, but, but carbohydrate, glucose, into the blood vessels of a liver, and this is true for other blood vessels, under the influence of insulin, the vascular endothelium rapidly took up that fluid volume. So we know that the cells are strung in a, in a single line, uh, kind of looking like, uh, they look like fried eggs. And they're kind of touching on the sides, they associate with each other, but a large part of the fluid volume in the lumen, in the inside of the blood vessel, transitions, the sugar transitions across into the cell and then across the cell into the other cells, the hepatocytes underneath. It also goes around the cells into the interstitial space. There's something called the basement membrane, which is this little tubular filled, fluid filled space between the endothelial cell and the hepatocytes. So you've got your blood vessel, your endothelial cell, fried eggs, the interstitial space, and then the hepatocytes. And food and fluid and effluent needs to cross those boundaries and be exchanged between the capillary blood vessel and the tissue underneath. That's the way the body exchanges fluids and delivers and removes, delivers food, nutrients, and removes waste. It is the holiday season, and we call it holidays, but in reality, in my profession, as a metabolic health specialist, this is the absolute worst time of the year. This year, we've just gone through uh, Halloween, and there's probably Halloween candy lying around. Whether you were celebrating or commiserating the election, there was crap to eat. We're coming up with Thanksgiving, then it's the whole Christmas block, then it's New Year, and then we go on diets. Here's a suggestion. Ketone IQ, a very rapidly absorbed source of ketones that suppresses appetite, that makes you feel good, is an incredibly powerful tool. Whether you use it with caffeine or without caffeine, my strong suggestion is just before you go out to Thanksgiving dinner, hit one of these babies. Or anytime you go out for a celebration, dinner, or whatever it is, a lunch, or you're going out to a barbecue, hit one of these guys. And what it does is it gives you that bump, it gives you that boost, it takes the pressure off you for, I must eat, I have to eat. And you're less vulnerable to be a, being a victim of the carbohydrates and the garbage, the garbage uh, that is always present at these meals. Protect yourself preemptively with Ketone IQ. Look down below and you'll see discount codes. So we studied this and under, electron, under the electron microscope, what we noticed under a high influence, under high infusion of sugar, we noticed that those endothelial cells very, very rapidly went from being these very flat endothelial cells to rounding up. And they rounded up and bulged into the lumen and they narrowed 
the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so we noticed that under EM, under electron microscopy. And what we then looked at is what's happening, why is this happening, and what effect does it have? Well, the first thing that we know is that every molecule of glucose has attached to it six molecules of water. So it's very hygroscopic, it loves water. So when sugar, with or without the influence of insulin, enters a cell, not only does that glucose go in, but the glucose goes in and drags a bunch of water. And then the, the glucose is attached, it's phosphorylated, G6PD, glucose 6 phosphorylase, to trap the glucose in the cell. And then that water, that free water, should leave the cell and exit the cell. And the mechanism, that exchange, most commonly uses a glucose-sodium co-transport. So you've got a sodium molecule and a glucose molecule, and the glucose brings the water in, and the sodium or the potassium removes the water from the cell. Okay? Cool, cool system. So it's this exchange um, to make sure that the cell doesn't have too much water. And if the exchange is kind of a one-to-one -one exchange, the cell doesn't swell up. The sugar crosses the cell, the water leaves, the, the cell uses the, the, the sugar as a source of energy in the mitochondria, cytosol and mitochondria. And it is a good balanced system the sodium glucose co-transporter and the sodium potassium and, so and potassium glucose co-transporters. Uh, those are transporters for water across the, uh, across the membrane. However, if the balance is off, if there's too little salt available inside the cell or potassium, or if the glucose rush into the cell overwhelms the sodium co-transport, then there's this huge rush of water. The water can't exit rapidly enough the glucose is being stored. It's not even being used up rapidly enough in the mitochondria for energy. So you've got this massive rapid swelling of the cell. And we saw that and we proved that on the, on, uh, uh, in, the, in the hepatic sinusoidal endothelium. And a couple of things that we saw is the first thing to understand is that flat endothelial cell is actually an endothelial cell under tension. Each cell has its own skeleton. And the cytoskeleton of that cell is active to keep the cell flat. A natural state for a cell is a round oval where the skeleton isn't working. So it requires energy to flatten that cell out. And that affects other, that energy cellular flattening affects other cells like muscles. However, when that sugar rushes in, a flat disc cannot hold on to a lot of sugar. Sorry, a flat cell cannot hold a lot of water. And what happens when you get this rapid influx of glucose and water, that cell rounds up, becomes big and round because of the influx of water. The cytoskeleton breaks down. Um, it leaves gaps between its partners. And now you get exposure of the underlying basement membrane. But this cell bulges into the lumen, narrows the lumen. The pressure goes up. The delivery of substrate goes down. There's a lot of negative consequences that happen. And this cell is then a damaged cell. And when the cell gets damaged, it also activates clotting. It act activates a procoagulant environment. But it becomes inflammatory. It's quiescent. And now it becomes inflamed when it sells up. It swells up. Now, if you get rid of the water, it settles down. But that's what happens in endothelial cells, and I proved that in my master's thesis. Okay, And we knew that it was that rush, that influx of sugar in these livers, which we thought they needed for energy, that was actually damaging them. And when we fed them fat and we fed them uh, protein, they were very happy, uh, and they didn't swell up, and they didn't have that damage. And we were able to, in large part, correct fatty liver disease in our donors, as well as, because fatty liver disease doesn't come from fat, it comes from that desperation to store that sugar as fat and protect those cells, but also the primary non-function of those livers when you reperfuse them in the recipient, where the, the, the sinusoidal membrane didn't work, we were able, in large part, to solve that problem by not having sugar in the infusion to those, to those donor livers. That's for a different day. But now we come to how this particular process, the swelling of the cells, forget about the inflammation, expression of cytokines and other things on the cell membrane. Let's just talk about the hygroscopic nature and we'll correlate this, I'm postulating here, with other diseases. My friend Angela Stanton, who's one of the world's experts in um, she's a PhD keto, uh, in the ketogenic approach 
to migraines, she's a migraineur, she's an expert in migraines, will tell you that the cornerstone of migraine management is actually when you feel that aura to consume a bulk of salt. She carries kosher salt, rock salt with her. When she feels the aura, she swallows that salt and it terminates or it reduces the activation of the migraine. Hmm, interesting. Now, what's a migraine? A migraine is where a select amount of your brain cells, a particular area, it may be your hearing center, your visual center, your gut center, maybe diff different areas of the brain where there's a rapid swelling of those cells. Because there's a rush of sugar, exactly the same mechanism, sugar dragging water into the cells, the swells rapidly swell up, there's not enough salt to get rid of the water, and when you take that salt, you activate that uh, sodium glucose co-transport, you remove the water, and the cell settles down, and you, you're bought, I hate that word now in the modern era, but you reduce the activation, the progression of the migraine. So that's how the salt works. Obviously, if you've got a ketogenic diet, if you've got a low glucose, you're reducing the activation risk. So you want to lower your glucose and use the salt if you have an aura. And that works very effectively for a lot of people with migraines. And Angela has been a big proponent of that. But that's how it works. It works in part on the swelling, on changing the hygroscopic nature and that rapid swelling of those brain cells. Now, what other part of the brain does this also occur in? And very, very commonly... Very commonly, we see people with Meniere's disease, with tinnitus, with uh, vestibular nerve, the eighth nerve, cranial nerve damage, or, or, or inflammation, where they lose their balance, they get the ringing in the ears, and it can be very debilitating. So far, I haven't had this. But the same process is happening. Whether it's in the auditory center in the brain, or along that nerve that comes from the auditory center that goes to the cochlear and they hang down in the fluid in the cochlear, which is your balance receptor as well as your hearing receptor. And when there's disturbance of the swelling of those cells, they create abnormal uh, 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 signals. And one abnormal signal backwards may be a balance abnormal signal. And also it may be the ringing sound that your brain thinks it's hearing. And you hear this ringing in the ear and that's Meniere's disease. And it is related in part, what's in, related to inflammation and swelling of those cells. And in large part, there's a contribution of that rapid swelling from hyperglycemia and from a lack of salt. So again, one of the treatments for Meniere's is to use an anti-inflammatory like meloxicam to reduce the inflammation, but also to alter, to lower the glucose, increase the ketones, less water required, fat doesn't like water, sugar does, and to increase the salt, the sodium potassium co-transport. And that has a positive effect in some people on Meniere's and, and um, the vestibular changes that require, that, that cause some balance changes. Think that one through. Again, same swelling mechanism. And we see the same issue in some of the gut cells. Where when I, as a general surgeon, operate on the intestine, you see this big, boggy, inflamed intestine. Now, the swelling is caused there by certain toxins, certain food allergies, but we see this in Crohn's disease, we see it in ulcerative colitis, we see it in inflammatory bowel disease, we see it in HSP, Henoxian line purpura, we see this massive swelling of these cells, and the entire system becomes dysfunctional. And so, for example, in a Crohn's patient, one of the things we do is we put them on a carnivore diet devoid of sugar, higher salt, the swelling goes away, and the inflammation improves. Now, there's other factors here, other inflammatory triggers that we also have to treat. But in large part, if you can reduce the swelling of the gut by reducing your glucose and increasing your salt intake, it changes up. So these are questions I'm asking. There are so many tissues in the human body. For example, the liver. We talked about the sinuses of the liver, but the liver itself swells up. So fatty liver disease is not just fat deposition in the cells. It's also the hygroscopic nature, the fluid filling the, filling the, um, the liver. So all these organs, when they become flooded, the cells swell and they become dysfunctional. And that is crucially important, crucially important in understanding metabolic disease. And I think we underthink of the hygro, hygroscopic, the water-loving aspects of glucose and the interplay between the vascular space and the intercellular space. And the final thing I'll tell you, and, and this absolutely does work, is when patients eat a decent amount of sugar, 
the sugar and that sugar stays in their in their blood vascular space so they're hyperglycemic not like me who's got a lot of insulin that can clear that uh, the obesogenic side but if you raise your blood sugar if you raise your blood sugar there's also an increase in the volume of fluid which contributes to hypertension and hypertension and that swelling not only the volume in the blood space but also now the swelling of the endothelial cells which necessitates the narrowing of the volume r to the power of four increases your hypertension increases the hard work that the heart has to do and increases the procoagulant inflammatory pathway that triggers the cell so it's not just the hyperglycemia it's the swelling the water associated with that and if you reduce your blood sugar hypertension gets better high blood pressure gets better and the plaque disease is probably affected in a negative way in a reduction way by that so think that one through, folks. We underspeak of the hygroscopic nature of sugar in the human body. And one of the incredible things when patients progress to a carnivore or carnivore-based diet, those folks with a bit of mild heart failure where their ankles swell up. Wow, look, my ankles aren't swollen. Because you're not retaining that water. And yet all the nephrologists, all the cardiologists tell you, don't eat so much salt but they never address sugar. I would tell you absolutely cut way down your carbohydrate consumption, increase your salt consumption. Obviously, there's a bell curve, but increase your salt consumption and your fluid dynamics will change and your inflammatory nature will change in the human body just by that simple change. If I've made you think I've done my job, I am the carb addiction doctor. Think about this in the context of your own body. By the way, we didn't even talk about swelling in the eye and glaucoma. Yeah, there's another one. So, so many body organs are affected by this. Think that one through. Think about a concussion and rapid swelling. All of those things are fluid shifts in the body, sometimes caused by trauma, often caused by sugar. So, if you like the content, drop us a buck at our Patreon or our PayPal account. You'll see the addresses in the show notes. Or if you're looking for a consult, if you want to understand this more and you want to understand how you can change, Give us a shout, WhatsApp, call, text from anywhere in the world. I do consults throughout the world. They are self-pay um, and we are busy. But 561-517-0642, leave a message. Kim or Julie in my office will get back to you and set up the consult. If I've made you think, I've done my job.